All right, I'm going to call this one the tale of um, three Palomar 300 A's. Um, as you can see, they're all white face. Um, this one here is mine I recently picked up and went through. Um, this one is the customers. I just made a video of it. Um, be, I'm going to send it back to the customer uh, pretty soon. And, and this one is a. Uh, um, one that I'm keeping, um, I had laying around for a while. This one has been highly modified, not by me. Um, somebody else did it. And let's look at a little amp porn with they dresses up, covers off. Um, this is the modified one. It's um, been modified for 10 through 15 meters only and everything in between. Um, and it doesn't have the um, ham bands in it at all so somebody took out the um, ham band coils <clears throat> and they also um, took all the other components like the relay boards and all that and they mounted everything underneath and they didn't use boards they hardwired it so um, this is kinda like a hardwired uh, D201 where all the uh, components are hardwired um, straight to the chassis using you know good terminals and the guy did a really good job so this is the one I plan on keeping and I have kept for a long time um, 10 meters through 15 only let's go to this one next this is a customers I just finished and just made a vid on yesterday day before um, this one is a hundred percent stock um, you know got the 10 through uh, 40 meter ham bands in there um, the ham band coils um, in the back for the drivers and got the um, ham band switch here um, when you change the ham bands I guess you can't see it moving there I guess you can it changes the switch here for the output and that switch back there for the uh, drivers you know tapping the coil at different places for the ham bands in it and um, normal uh, relay three relay uh, uh, PC board and, it, and like I say as far as I know this one is a hundred percent stock so why I brought all that up that's the stock one that's the uh, 10 meter modded one only and then this in the middle my recent purchase it's like what's up with all them coils there when I first got it and looked at it I'm like wow they just went with every coils right but if you look at it it's a lot more um, coils to this one than it is this completely stock one right here stock this one I bought and I looked at it it looks all factory too the the backs the same with the drivers that's the same but over here again um, all the coils for the um, output same same bands 10 through 40 meters no extra bands or anything and I checked but it's different first I didn't pay any attention to that but then um, it kind of tunes different too it's not quite the same a little bit harder to tune and I'm not getting quite as much out of this one with the heavy duty coils which I thought was interesting then I am the um, factory one and I tested each and every one of the tubes and they all test at about a hundred percent equally and I thought it was interesting I'm not getting quite as much out with this one so I had to think about it and look at it and look at it and more and I did figure out the uh, difference of why they did that and uh, but that's what I wanted to show here is this one with the um, crazy um, coils and why'd they do that what's the purpose of that that's factory 
and that's all you really need if you're just going to run 10 meters you know just a couple turns of the coil for the uh, output and it's about double that for the drivers because the plate load is different and then non-factory fan and like I say this one they um, it's got all the components but everything's hardwired straight to the chassis so I'm like that's unique I'm going to keep that fella all pretty clean all look good and like I say this is a customer's going back so anyway that's all we're going to do to show that and I guess I'll try to do it on this video is um, see if I can fire this guy up and get this other ones out the way here right quick these chassis are pretty light without the power supply and also on this one with the heavy duty coils this is also the um, full way bridge one it used this to the um, full way bridge power supply with the bigger transformer I didn't take the cover off so you could see it but it's just uh, the transformer is like a half inch bigger a little heavier on the full way bridge and it doesn't use the uh, voltage doubler circuit so it's actually a better circuit with the full way bridge I think the uh, only reason that Palomar went with the voltage doubler is it's cheaper to make so anyway everything looks good out the way so we're gonna plug her in this one's been recapped um, went through all that stuff works good so it's warming up now it's the um, all the three of them are the 6 LF6 version um, none of them used the 8950 and to me the only difference between the 8950 and the 6 LF6 is the 8950 uses 12 volt filament and the 6 LF6 uses um, 6 volt filament a lot of people think that you know the 8950s you can get more and I've even seen ratings where they rate the 8950 for more watts than the 6 LF6 but my theory on that is it's the exact same tune, tube but they you know rate tubes different if it's for RF you rate it one way if it's for audio you know it's not going to do as much because it's a different duty cycle um, you know originally the 6 LF6's were sweep tubes and they were rated for using on a um, sweep tube on a TV you know and the TV could be on 6, 8, you know 24 hours a day so it had a, um, a you know a 24 7 duty cycle a continuous duty cycle for a tube now if you take that same tube and then rate it for uh, using it in an amplifier it's gonna be on you know probably 20 minutes in an hour or 10 minutes in an hour at the most you're not gonna uh, key down an amp and lock it down at least most amps can't handle that and they aren't made for that so it's gonna have a higher rating at the intermittent um, duty cycle than it is on the um, continuous duty cycle amps called a continuous duty cycle CCS continuous commercial service and then the uh, intermittent is ICAS in a minute, I forgot what the C was. Tram doctors uh, getting old, but intermittent something with a C amateur service. Um, so anyway, this one ought to be warmed up with the full way bridge. I know I've been messing with the knobs, so it probably need to be tuned. Um, four watt radio over there going in it and let's see if I can key it down and talk and tune at the same time uh oh how come I'm not keying there you go I got a mic switch box and I had it on the wrong mic alright we're on the 2000 watt scale And just under 300. Audio. 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 That's on average bird watts. The um, 
other customers idea just did a little bit more oh, that must be on peak so let's see if I can uh, put a little audio through it audio 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 yeah, this is not easy to do audio well, I give up. It's too hard to tune and talk and uh, do the camera and all that at one time. But if I peaked it up right, audio on peak, it'd do about 450. Still a 300 watt dead key. And uh, on average, it basically about stands still. Like I say, a little less than the um, other one with the same tubes. And I think, well, I know it's the... Um, all that coiling got something to do with it so I'm gonna give an attaboy to whoever um, can say why they have all that extra coil same you know 10 through 40 meter band but all that extra coil and I know why I figured it out it took me a minute but um just an attaboy who the first one that um, comes with the reason why there so anyway that's gonna be it on this um little bit unique Palomar 300A with the um, full wave bridge heavier transformer 600 volt recap you would think it would do a little bit more than the voltage doubler but um, that, again because of that little coil and it's a little bit more difficult to tune it's actually doing a little bit less and add a boy to the first person who comes up with why alright that's gonna be it on this one bye